Hey, have you ever been like chased around the internet and even your phone with ads for the same product? Like you might be talking about something or you're reading something, you go to a web page and then you're on your phone, you might be playing a game, uh, scrolling Facebook, you see the same ad for the same company. Uh, Mike Loudon is one of our BAM Squad coaches, absolute expert and wizard when it comes to all things digital marketing and Google ads. Um, he just did this workshop for our, our crew and the BAM Squad and he talked all about this very topic and I want to play you a section from that workshop. I think you're really going to love it and here comes the clip now. Here's a guitar. The picture uh, came up poorly, I'm sorry. But this guitar is here for a reason. I want to tell you a quick little story. This is my most recent guitar purchase. This is a Charvel DK24 HH two-point trim. We love it. In satin burgundy mist, of course. Yes? And I bring this guitar up for a very specific reason. I, it's very easy to convince me to buy a new guitar. Okay? Guitar companies, Sweetwater and Zazounds love me. <laughs> All right? It's super easy to convince me to buy a new guitar. Okay? But let me tell you the journey of me buying this guitar. Okay? I saw this guitar at a guitar store once. And I didn't even, I was like, that's a cool color. I kind of want a guitar that's purpley. Sweet. But then I saw it was a Charvel. I didn't think Charvel guitars were for me. Those are like oftentimes for 80 shredders or whatever. Not my not my bag, whatever. Moved on. Two months later, see it at a show. Somebody's playing it. I was like, oh, that's a pretty cool guitar. I should look into this. Forgot to look into it. A couple uh, months, a couple other months go by. I see a YouTube video. This guitar comes up. It's like, yeah, I'll watch it. Watched a little bit of it. So on and so, so forth. Because I watched that YouTube video, I then got followed around. Sweetwater would say, hey, check out this guitar. Check out this guitar. Check out this guitar. Finally, I was like, is that a roasted maple neck? It looks like a roasted maple neck. So I clicked on Sweetwater and I read the specs. I was like, oh, that is a roasted maple neck. I've always wanted that, uh, that in a guitar, as a matter of fact, blah, blah, blah. But I didn't do anything. I moved on. Another month goes by. And then I see another one of those ads. And I go, those surely are very metal-like pickups, right? It's a Charvel. It has to be. And I click on. I'm like, oh, Nico, two pickups. Those are my favorite type of pickups. What? Still didn't buy it, right? Went through, went through, went through, went through. This went on forever. Finally, I had a guitar teacher who works for me who had the guitar and I played it. I was like, this is pretty sweet. Still didn't buy it. Then another month went by, right? And then long story short, I ended up buying the guitar, okay? And I bring this up, first off, because I like talking about guitars. And secondly, because again, I'm the target demographic for buying guitars. And it took me forever to buy this guitar, okay? And I think if we all raise our hands, we can have similar stories of, you know, maybe we bought, you know, a cool new blender or an espresso machine, or maybe it is another guitar or an instrument. We've all gone through that, right? We go through this journey where we're followed around and it takes us a little while to buy, right? We all do that. Yes. Raise hands. Yes. Cool. Yeah. We all do that. Cool. Hey, your customers are too. <laughs> and, and that's what I think that a lot of people aren't considering. They go, oh yeah, it takes me a while to buy something, but my customers, they come to my website and they're immediately floored. And they buy immediately. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, sometimes. So here's an example of a customer journey. And it, perhaps it's one that you're familiar with. Somebody searches for piano lessons on Google. Whew, you pop up, maybe because you got some really good SEO, maybe you got some really good Google ads going, cool. Yeah, they click on an organic or paid listing. We love it. That's what we put all that work in for. And they have to think about it and they leave. Dang. Well, surely the journey continues from here. Nope, end of customer journey. How many of us have customers on that customer journey right now? How many times has that happened for us? Probably a lot, even though we've all admitted <laughs> that we don't shop that way either. Don't worry, I have another example. Here's one. This is for Facebook and stuff. So this will be better, right? Sees a cool Instagram ad about an amazing music school, right? We all have amazing music schools. We're ballers. Incredible. They click through and they learn about this amazing music school. They're so excited, right? Ah, they got to think about it and they have to leave. That's fine. That's not the end of the customer journey. Yeah, it is. Ah, okay. One was Google and one was Facebook. They, we still, they're dead in the water, right? So many of our customers are doing this and a lot of us aren't doing a lot about it. And I think that's a mistake. <laughs> that's when I say, it. I'm working on this really hard. I don't have this perfected yet, but uh, this would have put a lot of energy into, right? So let's do another go around. All right. I'll go through this kind of quickly. Uh, they see a cool Instagram ad, just like the other one. Sweet. Amazing music school. They click through and learn about the amazing music school. We love it. They have to think about it and they leave. All right. This is where we totally lost them last time. But then now the customer sees some other info about the school pop up while visiting other websites. Okay, cool. They're popping up. They see Loud and Clear Music School while they're doing their shopping or whatever. Okay, cool. Then they see a Facebook ad for the same school, this time with a great offer. Hey, check it out. Here's a two for 22. Here's a free trial. Here's a whatever. Okay, cool. They click through. We got them. Don't wait. We got them this time. They're excited about the offer. 
They got to talk to their spouse. That's fine. This is such a good offer. It's no big deal. They're going to talk to their spouse. Nope, they forget to do that. Dang. That's all right. A week goes by. We're going to get them. We're going to get them. They, they go on YouTube, watch a video on how to fix their garbage disposal. Okay. And they see that school. They see us. They love it. Okay. Now it's not the time to click through though, right? Because their garbage disposal smells like death. They got to fix that. But it's cool that they saw that, right? All right. Their friend Susie comes over after the disposal is fixed, of course. And they get to chat. And then Susie says, hey, they have a son that's taking lessons at that school. And they go, man, I was, I've was i seen that school everywhere. Surely we have them now, right? They're getting a referral from a friend, right? So the next day, they search for the school by name. They know who you are. They're typing it into Google. They click through on either a Google ad or with some really great SEO. It's over. It's done for. They fill out a form. They got the info. It's happening. We got this person. Yes? Uh, their boss calls. They got a promotion at work, and they're really busy. No time for lessons. Dang. We were so close, right? We were so, so, so close. And then they get emails from the school, but the customer never opens them. They're too busy. They don't got time for lessons right now. Okay? We've all seen this. We've all went through this before. Six months go by. They're reminded of the school via Facebook. Okay, cool. We got them now, right? They're reminded they're ready. Six months. They're not busy. They still do nothing. Dang. They get another email from the school with an exciting offer. They become a customer. Cool. This, I'm telling you guys, is a way more normal customer journey. Okay? So I'm going to have some questions for you guys. First off, what booked this customer? Right? So if we go back to this whole thing. Who won? Like, was it the first Instagram ad? Was it Susie telling them about the school? Was it the email campaign that didn't let them drip? Uh, was it the them seeing on the 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 Google display stuff falling around? What which ad won? I would say they all worked together, you know? Like I wouldn't say that it was just the emails. We wouldn't have gotten the email if it wasn't for the Instagram ad, but the Instagram ad definitely didn't do the only heavy lifting, right? We had to do all this other stuff. Um, another question. Was every step of this journey a deciding factor? I don't know. That's a tough one. Like here's one. Customer sees uh, info about the school pop up while visiting websites. They didn't click on anything. They also didn't click on the YouTube video, but they saw that school. They're probably trying to keep tape top of mind. It seems like the school's legit. Did that affect the sale? Like probably a little. There's really no way to tell, right? And then my next question is, yeah, what cus what percentage of customers do you think are like this? I think like everyone, dude, <laughs> like most of them. Yes, there's going to be people who just click through and become your customer. But most of the time, that's not the case. And real quickly, data-driven conversions show that the big guys are thinking this way. And what I mean by that is even places like Google, you guys may have gotten that email. Google is switching to a model where conversions are not on one click or two clicks or three clicks. They're spreading it out and they're not giving you the choice. There used to be, hey, your first Google ad is what got the customer. And then it used to be, no, it's your last Google ad that got the customer. Even Google is saying, uh, we, we got to spread this out a little bit. You know what I mean? And then my other question, would you have booked this customer, right? So on that customer journey, do you have kinks in your chain, right? Would you have gotten this customer? Did you, would you have followed around with everything? Would you have the emails? Do you have, I don't know. That's a tough question to ask yourself, man. But if we can all admit, which I think we can, most customers are like this, then perhaps it's also time to admit to yourself, Maybe I wouldn't have booked this customer and maybe that's a problem for me.